Okay. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, today is my Instagram takeover for uh, True Sport, and uh, it's on mental health and uh, wellness. And I want to bring in some of the experts because I'm not an expert, um, but I do know some about it. So uh, today I have uh, Brett McCabe, who's a uh, clinical psychologist and sports psychologist expert, been on ESPN, Golf Channel, all that kind of stuff. Thanks so much for taking the time to uh, answer some of my questions that I have, Brett. Absolutely. Super important topic. So um, I've got a couple questions here, five questions today. Um, what do you have uh, one tip that you would give for young athletes to help reduce performance anxiety? Uh, so you have to remember that competition is not a validator. So it doesn't validate your training or your ability. Competition, the most important thing about it is it helps prepare you for the next competition. So if you have performance anxiety, it's not a bad thing. It's just your mind and body ramping up for the unknown. So use it as a way to learn about yourself versus trying to prove it or think you should be at a certain level. That's why most people have really bad anxiety when they compete. Nice. So for coaches, uh, what have you found that is the best approach for kind of reducing performance anxiety in, in your teams? So for coaches, it goes back to that first point. Work with a player and a team afterwards to evaluate what happened and then what can we do to learn from it. Now, here's the thing. When you have success, that's the time to coach hard. When you have a struggle, support your players. Too many coaches do the opposite. When they have a struggle, they dive in and they get yelling and they yell and they scream and they coach really hard. And then when they have success, they let down. Do the opposite. So use each scenario as a learning environment instead of, you know, a measure about where you are like in the game like that 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 just creates way too much stress and anxiety and as a former athlete it doesn't work nice um so for coaches again um are, are there any signs that you, you maybe should be looking for um for uh, signs of maybe men one of your athletes struggling uh, mentally maybe with their overall mental health not just um performance anxiety related to the actual event so one thing I want coaches to understand is that a player showing emotion does not mean they have emotional problems, okay? People are fiery. They're excited. If we put out a game of Monopoly and somebody got upset, we wouldn't think anything of it. What I see more of an issue with regards to uh, being uh, having mental health struggles is withdrawal, pulling back, becoming almost numb to the environment as if they feel like the next negative thing is the next negative thing instead of fighting with it. And, and so I want people to be emotional. I don't want to coach emotion at them. I don't want them to be robots. I want them to be emotionally engaged. But when I see withdrawal, I see them shutting down, just not, you know, receiving coaching and just passing it off. They're disengaging at that point. And there's usually a reason why they're going into their shell or coping in that mechanism. Okay, nice. Uh, so fourth question, how would you best address uh, your team after a heartbreaking loss, knowing that they have some big games coming up in the future? That's a great question. So I think the first thing is, let's go back to what we said earlier. Let's support after a tough loss. Let's coach hard after a tough victory. So after a tough loss, I'm going to have coaches, uh, you know, identify maybe where the two or three inflection points changed, where, you know, maybe the opponent got the advantage or we didn't run our time or we didn't play to our best. And we're going to look at those moments, but instead we're going to prepare us for the next opportunity. We're not going to beat us down. The last thing I want people to do is put undue pressure, stress, increased fear, increased doubts, and worrying about appeasing coaches. And after a tough loss, the best thing to do is like, hey, we're going to go get them again tomorrow. Let's go back to the things that we know work. Let's go back to the things that we're good at. And let's allow percentages of the game to work in our favor next time. We don't need to turn up the volume in that situation. What we need to do is allow people to naturally bounce back and they will they will over time nice nice um so last question and maybe i don't know most difficult uh we we obviously have a mental health crisis i think in, in our in our country i think that's very well known among everyone um is there any uh thing that you think um we could do to help uh kind of resolve not so resolve but uh um improve this crisis that may include sport well i think we have a couple factors involved one is we have a, a tremendous mental health burden that's coming it came out of covid it was building before then 
Even the Surgeon General has talked about that right now, about isolation and loneliness. Social media is a fan that feeds the fire. Even though it has a lot of positives like what we're doing right here, there's also a lot of negatives to it. We also have an entire generation where our standards are too high. That leads to perfectionism. And while perfectionism is great, it's great until it's not. And so we have this burden. And then we have another problem. We have a stigma issue in this country, which I think is slowly breaking down a little bit, which is good. But we also have an access issue. Okay, we have a major, major access issue in this country. Um, and, and that needs to be fixed at the legislative level. But I think for what we can all do, we know that exercise is beneficial. We need to get out of our houses. We need to go for walks. We need to move. We need to feed our bodies appropriately and not not go to the areas that are unhealthy for us and not the high fat, high sugar foods. We need to treat our body like it's a gift. We need to treat our mind the same way. So we need to stimulate our mind. Social media doesn't really stimulate the mind. Reading does, communicating with others in person, going for walks setting small um, desires, I call them desires instead of goals, that you want to achieve and get some small bites. Sometimes when we're in the rut or we're not feeling good, what we do is we throw the line so far out there and that line becomes so difficult to hit and we become frustrated. And that's that perfectionism and all the other factors. So I think what we need to do is we need to talk, we need to communicate, we need to reach out for help earlier. We need to check on the people that are struggling and help them deal with this. This is not a burden that needs to be walked alone. And this is something that we can do together in coaches, sports, exercise, health, all brilliant places to do it. Love it. Uh, I love the love the small bites comment. Uh, I think so many people get overwhelmed with the big, big picture and uh, just taking the small bites out of things uh, can can lead to that uh, that end desire. So absolutely. Uh, Brett, thanks so much for uh, joining me today um, and uh, sharing your your expert knowledge on on this topic. Thanks for having me. You take care. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording. Perfect. My ability to do this part. Oh, wait. What the heck? Hmm. Well, this part will all be cut out. That'll be the good part yeah. about it. <laughs> Not um, a problem. I'm just looking. When you hang up, it'll stop. Oh, is that what it does? Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Well, I'll just hang up and uh, I'll I'll tag you on the post. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Yep.